Sola fide Latin, by faith alone, also known as justification by faith alone, is a Christian theological doctrine commonly held to distinguish many Protestant churches from the Catholic Church, as well as the Eastern Orthodox Churches and Oriental Orthodox Churches. The doctrine of sola fide asserts God pardon for guilty sinners is granted to and received through faith alone, excluding all works, all mankind, it is asserted, is fallen and sinful, under the curse of God, and incapable of saving itself from God's wrath and curse. But God, on the basis of the life, death, and resurrection of His Son, Jesus Christ alone solus Christus, grants sinners judicial pardon, or justification, which is received solely through faith. Christ's righteousness, according to the followers of sola fide, is imputed or attributed by God to the believing sinner as opposed to infused or imparted, so that the divine verdict and pardon of the believing sinner is based not upon anything in the sinner, but upon Jesus Christ and his righteousness alone, which are received through faith alone. Justification by faith alone is distinguished from the other graces of salvation. See the Ordo Salutis for more detail on the doctrine of salvation considered more broadly than justification by faith alone. Lutheran and Reformed churches have held to sola fide justification in opposition to Roman Catholicism especially, but also in opposition to significant aspects of Eastern Orthodoxy. These Protestant churches exclude all human works except the works of Jesus Christ, which form the basis of justification from the legal verdict or pardon of justification. According to Martin Luther, justification by faith alone is the article on which the church stands or falls. Thus, faith alone is foundational to Lutheranism and Reformed Christianity, and as a formula distinguishes it from other Christian denominations. However, theological discussion in the centuries since the Reformation and Counter-Reformation has suggested that the differences are in emphasis and concepts rather than doctrine, since the Roman Catholics or Orthodox do not in fact hold that works are a basis of justification or a means of salvation, and most Protestants do in fact accept the need for repentance and the primacy of grace. See Section Lutheran World Federation and the Roman Catholic Church and Section Lutheran Orthodox Joint Commission below. Further, many Protestant churches actually hold more nuanced positions such as sola gratia, sola fide or justification by faith i.e., without the alone. According to a 2017 survey conducted in Western Europe by the Pew Research Center, "...fewer people say that faith alone in Latin, sola fide leads to salvation, the position that Martin Luther made a central rallying cry of 16th-century Protestant reformers." Protestants in every country surveyed except Norway are more likely to say that both good deeds and faith in God are necessary for salvation. Most scholars of early Christianity are adherents of the new perspective on Paul and so believe sola fide as a misinterpretation on the part of Lutherans and that Paul was actually speaking about laws such as circumcision, dietary laws, Sabbath, temple rituals, etc. that were considered essential for the Jews of the time. In the General Council of Trent the Catholic Church cautioned against an extreme version of sola fide in Canon 14 on self-righteousness and justification without repentance, declaring, If any one saith, that man is truly absolved from his sins and justified, because that he assuredly believed himself absolved and justified, or, that no one is truly justified but he who believes himself justified, and that, by this faith alone, absolution and justification are effected, let him be anathema. However, since the first of Luther's 95 Theses was a call to repentance, opposing this canon to actual Lutheran theology is problematic. Christian theologies answer questions about the nature, function, and meaning of justification quite differently. These issues include, is justification an event occurring instantaneously or is it an ongoing process? Is justification effected by divine action alone monergism, by divine and human action together synergism, or by human action erroneously called Pelagianism? Is justification permanent or can it be lost? What is the relationship of justification to sanctification, the process whereby sinners become righteous and are enabled by the Holy Spirit to live lives pleasing to God? Topic. Justification in Lutheranism Topic. From 1510 to 1520, Luther lectured on the Psalms and the books of Hebrews, Romans, and Galatians. 
As he studied these portions of the Bible, he came to view the use of terms such as penance and righteousness by the Roman Catholic Church in new ways. See Romans chapter 4 verses 1 to 5, Galatians chapter 3 verses 1 to 7, and Genesis chapter 15 verse 6. He became convinced that the church was corrupt in its ways and had lost sight of what he saw as several of the central truths of Christianity, the most important of which for Luther was the doctrine of justification. God act of declaring a sinner righteous by faith alone through God's grace. He began to teach that salvation or redemption is a gift of God's grace, attainable only through faith in Jesus. This one and firm rock, which we call the doctrine of justification, insisted Martin Luther, is the chief article of the whole Christian doctrine, which comprehends the understanding of all godliness. He also called this doctrine the Articulus Stantis et Cadentis Ecclesia, article of the standing and falling church. If this article stands, the church stands. If it falls, the church falls. For Lutherans, this doctrine is the material principle of theology in relation to the Bible, which is the form principle. They believe justification by grace alone through faith alone in Christ's righteousness alone is the gospel, the core of the Christian faith around which all other Christian doctrines are centered and based. Luther came to understand justification as entirely the work of God. When God's righteousness is mentioned in the gospel, it is God's action of declaring righteous the unrighteous sinner who has faith in Jesus Christ. The righteousness by which the person is justified declared righteous is not his own theological a, proper righteousness but that of another Christ alien righteousness that is why faith alone makes someone just and fulfills the law said luther faith is that which brings the holy spirit through the merits of christ thus faith for luther is a gift from god and a living, bold trust in God's grace, so certain of God's favor that it would risk death a thousand times trusting in it. This faith grasps Christ's righteousness and appropriates it for the believer. He explained his concept of justification in the small called articles. The first and chief article is this, Jesus Christ, our God and Lord, died for our sins and was raised again for our justification. Romans chapter 3 verses 24-25. He alone is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world John chapter 1 verse 29, and God has laid on him the iniquity of us all Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6. All have sinned and are justified freely, without their own works and merits, by his grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, in his blood Romans chapter 3 verses 23 to 25. This is necessary to believe. This cannot be otherwise acquired or grasped by any work, law or merit. Therefore, it is clear and certain that this faith alone justifies us. Nothing of this article can be yielded or surrendered, even though heaven and earth and everything else falls Mark chapter 13 verse 31. Traditionally, Lutherans have taught forensic or legal justification, a divine verdict of acquittal pronounced on the believing sinner. God declares the sinner to be not guilty because Christ has taken his place, living a perfect life according to God's law and suffering for his sins. For Lutherans, justification is in no way dependent upon the thoughts, words, and deeds of those justified through faith alone in Christ. The new obedience that the justified sinner renders to God through sanctification follows justification as a consequence, but is not part of justification. Lutherans believe that individuals receive this gift of salvation through faith alone. Saving faith is the knowledge of, acceptance of, and trust in the promise of the gospel. Even faith itself is seen as a gift of God, created in the hearts of Christians by the work of the Holy Spirit through the Word and baptism. Faith is seen as an instrument that receives the gift of salvation, not something that causes salvation. Thus, Lutherans reject the decision theology, which is common among modern evangelicals. For Lutherans, justification provides the power by which Christians can grow in holiness. Such improvement comes about in the believer only after he has become a new creation in Christ through holy baptism. This improvement is not completed in this life. Christians are always saint and sinner at the same time, simul justus et peccator, saints because they are holy in God's eyes, for Christ's sake, and do works that please him, sinners because they continue to sin until death. Topic origin of the term topic Martin Luther elevated sola fide to the principal cause of the Protestant Reformation, the rallying cry of the Lutheran cause, and the chief distinction of the Lutheran and Reformed branches of Christianity from Roman Catholicism. 
John Calvin, also a proponent of this doctrine, taught that everyone who would obtain the righteousness of Christ must renounce his own. According to Calvin, it is only because the sinner is able to obtain the good standing of the Son of God, through faith in him, and union with him, that sinners have any hope of pardon from, acceptance by, and peace with God. Historically, the expression, justification by faith alone, has appeared in a number of Catholic Bible translations, the Nuremberg Bible 1483 in Galatians chapter 2, 16, Dikaiotai Anthropos dia Pistios Christau Isau has Nur Durch den Glauben, and the Italian translations of 1476, 1538 and 1546 have Ma solo per la fede or per la sola fede, the official Italian Bible of the Catholic Church, La Sacra Bibbia della Conferenza Episcopale Italiana 2008, in Galatian 2.16, reads in part, but only through faith in Jesus Christ ma soltanto per mezzo della fede. The «faith alone» expression also appears in at least nine English Bible translations Amplified Bible AMP, Amplified Bible, Classic Edition AMPC, God's Word Translation GW, Good News Translation GNT, Living Bible TLB The Message MSG Names of God Bible NOG The Voice Voice Weymouth New Testament WNY Luther added the word align alone in German to Romans chapter 3 verse 28 controversially so that it read So now we hold that man is justified without the help of the works of the law alone through faith The word alone does not appear in the Greek texts and Luther acknowledged this fact, but he defended his translation by maintaining that the adverb, alone, was required by idiomatic German. I knew very well that the word solum, alone, in Latin, is not in the Greek or Latin text, it is a fact that these four letters sola are not there, at the same time, it belongs there if the translation is to be clear and vigorous. I wanted to speak German, not Latin or Greek, since it was German I had undertaken to speak in the translation. But it is the nature of our German language that in speaking of two things, one of which is affirmed and the other denied, we use the word solum align along with the word nicht not or cane no. For example, we say, the farmer brings a line only grain and cane no money. Luther further stated that sola was used in theological traditions before him and this adverb makes Paul's intended meaning clearer. I am not the only one, nor the first, to say that faith alone makes one righteous. There was Ambrose, Augustine and many others who said it before me. And if a man is going to read and understand St. Paul, he will have to say the same thing, and he can say nothing else. Paul's words are too strong. They allow no works, none at all. Now if it is not works, it must be faith alone. Other Catholic authorities also used alone. In their translation of Romans chapter 3 verse 28 or exegesis of salvation by faith passages. Topic: <laughs> Faith and works. Topic: Paul was not antinomian. While salvation cannot be achieved through works, Titus chapter 3 verse 5, faith being a unity with Christ in the spirit naturally issues in love, Galatians 5 to 6. This was Martin Luther emphasis likewise, in relation to sola fide, the place of works is found in the second chapter of the epistle to the Ephesians, justification is by grace through faith, not from yourselves and not by works. In other words, it is by faith alone since all human efforts are excluded here, eph. 2-8-9 this excludes, for example, the Catholic doctrine that men are saved by faith and works. Ephesians goes on to say that every person who has faith is to produce good works, according to God's plan These works, however, are not a cause of forgiveness but a result of forgiveness. Faith alone justifies but faith is never alone. It is followed by works. In short, works of love are the goal of the saving faith. 1 Tim 1 to 5. According to the defense of the Augsburg Confession of Philip Melanchthon, the Epistle of James clearly teaches that the recipients of the letter have been justified by God through the saving gospel. James chapter 1 verse 18. Thirdly, James has spoken shortly before concerning regeneration, namely that it occurs through the gospel. For thus he says James chapter 1 verse 18, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. 
When he says that we have been born again by the gospel, he teaches that we have been born again and justified by faith. For the promise concerning Christ is apprehended only by faith, when we set it against the terrors of sin and of death. James does not, therefore, think that we are born again by our works. In answer to a question on James chapter 2 verse 24, you see that a person is justified by what he does and not by faith alone. The Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod has written, In James chapter 2, the author was dealing with errorists who said that if they had faith they didn't need to show their love by a life of faith 2 James countered this error by teaching that true, saving faith is alive, showing itself to be so by deeds of love James chapter 2 verses 18, 26. The author of James taught that justification is by faith alone and also that faith is never alone but shows itself to be alive by good deeds that express a believer's thanks to God for the free gift of salvation by faith in Jesus Christ." According to the defense of the Augsburg Confession again, James, therefore, did not believe that by good works we merit the remission of sins and grace. For he speaks of the works of those who have been justified, who have already been reconciled and accepted, and have obtained remission of sins. In Article 20 of Good Works, the Augsburg Confession states that I.T. is taught on our part that it is necessary to do good works, not that we should trust to merit grace by them, but because it is the will of God. It is only by faith that forgiveness of sins is apprehended. Martin Luther, who opposed antinomianism, is recorded as stating, works are necessary for salvation but they do not cause salvation, for faith alone gives life. In his introduction to Romans, Luther stated that saving faith is a living, creative, active and powerful thing, this faith. Faith cannot help doing good works constantly. It doesn't stop to ask if good works ought to be done, but before anyone asks, it already has done them and continues to do them without ceasing. Anyone who does not do good works in this manner is an unbeliever. Thus, it is just as impossible to separate faith and works as it is to separate heat and light from fire. Scottish theologian John Murray of Westminster Theological Seminary in Philadelphia, asserted, Faith alone justifies but a justified person with faith alone would be a monstrosity which never exists in the kingdom of grace. Faith works itself out through love Gal. 5-6 and faith without works is dead James chapter 2 verses 17 to 20 it is living faith that justifies and living faith unites to Christ both in the virtue of his death and in the power of his resurrection no one has entrusted himself to Christ for deliverance from the guilt of sin who has not also entrusted himself to him for deliverance from the power of sin contemporary evangelical theologian rc sproul writes the relationship of faith and good works is one that may be distinguished but never separated less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 if good works do not follow from our profession of faith, it is a clear indication that we do not possess justifying faith. The reformed formula is, we are justified by faith alone but not by a faith that is alone. Michael Horton concurs by saying, this debate, therefore, is not over the question of whether God renews us and initiates a process of gradual growth in holiness throughout the course of our lives. We are justified by faith alone, but not by a faith that is alone, Luther stated, and this recurring affirmation of the new birth and sanctification as necessarily linked to justification leads one to wonder how the caricatures continue to be perpetuated without foundation. The Joint Declaration on the Doctrine of Justification JDDJ, signed by both the Lutheran World Federation and the Roman Catholic Church on 31 October 1999 declares, We confess together that good works, a Christian life lived in faith, hope and love, follow justification and are its fruits. When the justified live in Christ and act in the grace they receive, they bring forth, in biblical terms, good fruit. Since Christians struggle against sin their entire lives, this consequence of justification is also for them an obligation they must fulfill. Thus both Jesus and the Apostolic Scriptures admonish Christians to bring forth the works of love. <laughs> <laughs> works of the law <laughs> Many Catholics see the exclusion of works of the law as only referring to works done for salvation under the Mosaic Law, versus works of faith which are held as meritorious for salvation. Adherents of sola fide respond that Jesus was not instituting keeping a higher moral code as means of salvation, and tend to see the exclusion of works of the law 
as the means of obtaining justification as referring to any works of the Mosaic law, and by implication, any works of righteousness which we have done. Titus chapter 3 verse 5 or any system in which one earns eternal life on the basis of the merit of works. However, most understand that the righteousness of the law is to be fulfilled by those who are justified by faith Romans chapter 8 verse 4. The Mosaic law and the principles of the gospel such as the Sermon on the Mount and the Last Judgment of Matthew chapter 25 are seen as being in correspondence, with the latter fulfilling, clarifying, and expanding on the former, centering on God's love for us, and love to others. Thus a Lutheran or Reformed believer can claim that, "...the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good." Romans chapter 7 verse 12 harmonizing the two principles of the same Bible. Topic. Epistle of James and Pauline Epistles Topic. Chapter 2 of the Epistle of James, verses 14-26, discusses faith and works, starting with verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works? Can faith save him? In verse 20 it says that faith without works is dead. The defense of the Augsburg Confession rejects the idea that the Epistle of James contradicts the Lutheran teaching on justification. He who has faith and good works is righteous, not indeed, on account of the works, but for Christ's sake, through faith. And as a good tree should bring forth good fruit, and yet the fruit does not make the tree good, so good works must follow the new birth, although they do not make man accepted before God, but as the tree must first be good, so also must man be first accepted before God by faith for Christ. S. Sake. The works are too insignificant to render God gracious to us for their sake, if he were not gracious to us for Christ's sake. Therefore James does not contradict St. Paul, and does not say that by our works we merit, etc. Confessional Lutheran theologians summarize James chapter 2. We are justified, declared righteous by people when they see the good works we do as a result of our faith and they conclude that our faith is sincere. In answer to another question on James chapter 2 verse 24 as well as Romans chapter 3 verses 23 to 24, the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod replied, Paul is writing to people who said that faith in Jesus alone does not save a person, but one has to also obey God's law in order to be justified, Gal 3 to 3, 5 to 4. To counter the false idea that what we do in keeping the law must be added to faith in what Christ did for us. Paul often emphasizes in his letters especially Galatians, Romans, Colossians that we are saved by grace through faith alone. James is writing to people who felt that believing in Jesus saved a person, but that having faith did not mean that a person necessarily would keep God's commandments out of love for God James chapter 2 verses 14, 17. To show that faith is not really faith unless it leads a person to thank God for salvation in a life of glad and willing obedience to God's holy will. James emphasized that a faith which did not show that it was living faith was really not faith at all. A Lutheran exegesis further points out that James is simply reaffirming Jesus' teaching in Matthew chapter 7 verse 16, and that in the tenth verse of the same chapter. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. James 2 denies works as a means to obtain forgiveness. James here verse 10, also shoots down the false doctrine of work righteousness. The only way to be free of sin is to keep the law perfectly and in its entirety. If we offend it in the slightest, tiniest little way, we are guilty of all. Thank God that he sent Jesus to fulfill the law in its entirety for us. The Joint Declaration on the Doctrine of Justification JDDJ, signed by the Lutheran World Federation and the Catholic Church, says that "...sinners are justified by faith in the saving action of God in Christ such a faith is active in love and thus the Christian cannot and should not remain without works." And later, "...good works, a Christian life lived in faith, hope and love, follow justification and are its fruits." When the justified live in Christ and act in the grace they receive, they bring forth, in biblical terms, good fruit. Since Christians struggle against sin their entire lives, this consequence of justification is also for them an obligation they must fulfill. 
Thus both Jesus and the Apostolic Scriptures admonish Christians to bring forth the works of love." The Joint Declaration never mentions the expression sola fide and the Catechism of the Catholic Church clearly teaches that salvation is obtained by the combination of faith and human efforts. Lutheran and Reformed Protestants, as well as others, base the sola fide on the fact that the New Testament contains almost 200 statements that appear to imply that faith or belief is sufficient for salvation, for example. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection, and the life, he that believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. John chapter 11 verse 25, and especially Paul's words in Romans, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Romans chapter 3 verse 28. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness." Romans 4 verses 4–5 The precise relationship between faith and good works remains an area of controversy in some Protestant traditions see also Law and Gospel. Even at the outset of the Reformation, subtle differences of emphasis appeared. For example, because the Epistle of James emphasizes the importance of good works, Martin Luther sometimes referred to it as the Epistle of Straw. Calvin on the other hand, while not intending to differ with Luther, described good works as a consequence or fruit of faith. The Anabaptists tended to make a nominal distinction between faith and obedience. Recent meetings of scholars and clergy have attempted to soften the antithesis between Protestant and Catholic conceptions of the role of faith in salvation, which, if they were successful, would have far-reaching implications for the relationship between most Protestant churches and the Catholic Church. These attempts to form a consensus are accepted among many Protestants and Catholics, but among others, sola fide continues to divide the Reformation churches, including many Lutherans, Reformed, and others, from other denominations. Some statements of the doctrine are interpreted as a denial of the doctrine as understood by other groups. There is a semantic component to this debate as well, which has gained new attention in the past century. Both Latin and English have two words to describe convictions, one is more intellectual English belief, Latin verb credo and one carries implications of faithfulness, English faith, Latin fides. But Greek and German have only one German glabe, Greek pistis. Some historians have suggested that this semantic issue caused some of the disagreement. Perhaps Luther's supporters may have understood salvation by faith alone to mean salvation by being faithful to Christ, while his opponents understood him to mean salvation by intellectual belief in Christ, since there are passages in Luther's works that could be taken to support either of these meanings. Both sides were able to quote passages from Luther defending their interpretation of what he meant. Topic. Sola fide and the early church fathers Topic. Both Protestant and Catholic theologians admit that faith alone was also taught by some church fathers. James Buchanan a Scottish minister, reckoned that there were at least 28 church fathers who taught justification through faith alone. According to Buchanan, at least until the 12th century there was always at least one theologian teaching the doctrine in a systematic way. Here are some quotes from various Christian writers through the ages, on both sides. Clement of Rome, c. 30-100. And we, Christians, too, being called by his will in Christ Jesus, are not justified by ourselves, nor by our own wisdom, or understanding, or godliness, or works which we have wrought in holiness of heart, but by that faith through which, from the beginning, Almighty God has justified all men, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Justin Martyr, d. 165. In his dialogue with Trifo, no longer by the blood of goats and of sheep, or by the ashes of a heifer, are sins purged, but by faith, through the blood of Christ and his death, who died on this very account. Marius Victorinus 290-364 For faith itself alone gives justification and sanctification. Didymus the Blind c. 313-398 A person is saved by grace, not by works but by faith. There should be no doubt but that faith saves and then lives by doing its own works, so that the works which are added to salvation by faith are not those of the law but a different kind of thing altogether. Hilary of Poitiers c. 315-367 in the Ninth Canon upon Matthew 
Faith only justifieth fides enum sola justifice. Hilary of Poitiers, c. 315 to 367, on Matthew chapter 20 verse 7. Wages cannot be considered as a gift, because they are due to work, but God has given free grace to all men by the justification of faith. Basil of Caesarea 329-379 Let him who boasts boast in the Lord, that Christ has been made by God for us righteousness, wisdom, justification, redemption. This is perfect and pure boasting in God, when one is not proud on account of his own righteousness but knows that he is indeed unworthy of the true righteousness and is or has been justified solely by faith in Christ. Gregory of Nazianus 329-390 Then, in the tenth place, work that which is good upon this foundation of dogma, for faith without works is dead, even as are works apart from faith. This is all that may be divulged of the sacrament, and that is not forbidden to the ear of the many. The rest yon shall learn within the church by the grace of the Holy Trinity, and those matters you shall conceal within yourself, sealed and secure. But one thing more I preach unto you. The station in which you shall presently stand after your baptism before the great sanctuary is a foretype of the future glory. The psalmody with which you will be received is a prelude to the psalmody of heaven, the lamps which you will kindle are a sacrament of the illumination there with which we shall meet the bridegroom, shining and virgin souls, with the lamps of our faith shining, not sleeping through our carelessness, that we may not miss him that we look for if he come unexpectedly, nor yet unfed, and without oil, and destitute of good works, that we be not cast out of the bridechamber. For I see how pitiable is such a case. He will come when the cry demands the meeting, and they who are prudent shall meet him, with their light shining and its food abundant, but the others seeking for oil too late from those who possess it. And he will come with speed, and the former shall go in with him, but the latter shall be shut out, having wasted in preparations the time of entrance, and they shall weep sore when all too late they learn the penalty of their slothfulness, when the bride chamber can no longer be entered by them for all their entreaties, for they have shut it against themselves by their sin, following in another fashion the example of those who missed the wedding feast with which the good father feasts the good bridegroom, one on account of a newly wedded wife, another of a newly purchased field, another of a yoke of oxen, which he and they acquired to their misfortune since for the sake of the little they lose the great. For none are there of the disdainful, nor of the slothful, nor of those who are clothed in filthy rags and not in the wedding garment even though here they may have thought themselves worthy of wearing the bright robe there, and secretly intruded themselves, deceiving themselves with vain hopes. Ambrose c. 339-397 this is the ordinance of God, that he which believeth in Christ should be saved without works, by faith only, freely receiving remission of his sins. Ambrose c. 339-397 Therefore let no one boast of his works, because no one can be justified by his works, but he who is just receives it as a gift, because he is justified by the washing of regeneration. It is faith, therefore, which delivers us by the blood of Christ, because blessed is he whose sins are forgiven, and to whom pardon is granted. Jerome 347 to 420 on Romans chapter 10 verse 3 God justifies by faith alone, Deus ex sola fide justifice. Chrysostom 349-407 the patriarch Abraham himself before receiving circumcision had been declared righteous on the score of faith alone, before circumcision, the text says, Abraham believed God, and credit for it brought him to righteousness. Chrysostom 349-407 For scripture says that faith has saved us. Put better, since God willed it, faith has saved us. Now in what case, tell me, does faith save without itself doing anything at all? Faith's workings themselves are a gift of God, lest anyone should boast. What then is Paul saying? Not that God has forbidden works but that he has forbidden us to be justified by works. No one, Paul says, is justified by works, precisely in order that the grace and benevolence of God may become apparent. Chrysostom 349-407 in like manner it will be no advantage to a Christian to have faith, and the gift of baptism, and yet be open to all the passions. Chrysostom 349-407 If any man have an ill life with a right faith, his faith shall not shelter him from punishment, his work being burned up. Augustine 354-430 If Abraham was not justified by works, how was he justified? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness Ram, 4-3, Gen, 15-6. Abraham, then, was justified by faith. 
Paul and James do not contradict each other, good works follow justification. Augustine 354 Although it can be said that God's commandments pertain to faith alone, if it is not dead faith, but rather understood as that live faith, which works through love. Augustine 354 when someone believes in him who justifies the impious, that faith is reckoned as justice to the believer, as David too declares that person blessed whom God has accepted and endowed with righteousness, independently of any righteous actions Rom 4 -6. What righteousness is this? The righteousness of faith, preceded by no good works, but with good works as its consequence. Ambrosiaster, 4th century, on Rom, 324. They are justified freely because they have not done anything nor given anything in return, but by faith alone they have been made holy by the gift of God. Cyril of Alexandria 412 For we are justified by faith, not by works of the law, as Scripture says Gal. 2 By faith in whom, then, are we justified? Is it not in him who suffered death according to the flesh for our sake? Is it not in one Lord Jesus Christ? Maximus the Confessor c. 580-562 For Jeremiah warns us, Do not say, We are the Lord's temple. Neither should you say, Faith alone in our Lord Jesus Christ can save me. By itself faith accomplishes nothing. For even the devils believe and shudder. No, faith must be joined to an active love of God which is expressed in good works. Bernard of Clairvaux 1092-1153 J. Justified by faith alone, solum justificator per fidem. Bernard of Clairvaux, 1092-1153. Therefore, the man who through sorrow for sin hungers and thirsts for justice, let him trust in the one who changes the sinner into a just man and judge righteous in terms of faith alone. He will have peace with God. Thomas Aquinas, 1225-1274. Therefore the hope of justification is not found in them the moral and ceremonial requirements of the law, but in faith alone. Rom 3.28, we consider a human being to be justified by faith, without the works of the law. Catholic view Pope Benedict XVI summarized the Catholic position as Luther's phrase, faith alone is true, if it is not opposed to faith in charity, in love. Faith is looking at Christ, entrusting oneself to Christ, being united to Christ, conformed to Christ, to his life. St. Paul speaks of faith that works through love cf. Gal 5 1. In view of the wide discrepancy between historical claims on the Catholic view of works versus faith and modern Catholic articulations of it, the following ground rules for interpreting catholic statements are useful the quotes are abridged from the catechism of the catholic church article 2 grace and justification 1996 our justification comes from the grace of god 1991 justification is the acceptance of god's righteousness through faith in jesus christ 1992 Justification has been merited for us by the Passion of Christ who offered himself on the cross as a living victim. 2007. With regard to God, there is no strict right to any merit on the part of man. 2010. Since the initiative belongs to God in the order of grace, no one can merit the initial grace of forgiveness and justification, at the beginning of conversion. Moved by the Holy Spirit and by charity, we can then merit for ourselves and for others. The graces. 1993. Justification establishes cooperation between God's grace and man's freedom. On man's part it is expressed by the ascent of faith to the word of God, which invites him to conversion, and in the cooperation of charity with the prompting of the Holy Spirit who proceeds and preserves his ascent. 2011. The charity of Christ is the source in us of all our merits before God. Grace, by uniting us to Christ in active love, ensures the supernatural quality of our acts and consequently their merit before God and before men, thus the Catholic view could perhaps be interpreted as a progression or flow, first grace, then initial trust, repentance, conversion, then charity, faith, hope, combined with an emphasis that none of these elements should be isolated without missing the package. 
Further, the sacraments of baptism, Eucharist, and reconciliation relate theatrically to each, baptism for the removal of sin in the case of an infant, original sin, Eucharist for the affirmation, reaffirmation, reenactment of acceptance of Jesus' sacrifice, and penance for the confession of lapses of faith and charity and the assignment of prayers, actions to rejoin faith and charity. Sola fide is rejected only as far as it would ignore or reject grace or the new commandment. Topic. Grace Topic. The Catholic view holds instead that grace, specifically, the form of grace known as sanctifying grace, and which first floods the soul at baptism, which empowers both one's ability to believe and perform good works, is essential as the gateway to salvation, but not the only element needed for salvation God S freely given grace is offered and also empowers both one's ability to believe and perform good works, both then becoming meritorious because they are joined to Christ's saving power of the cross. Phil 2:12-13, Catechism of the Catholic Church, 1987 to 2029. A Christian must respond to this free gift of grace from God given first, ordinarily, in baptism. 1 Pet 3:21, both by having faith and by living in the light of Christ through love JN 3:16 1 JN 1 to 7 Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 which perfects the Christian throughout their life James chapter 2 verse 22 The Catholic position is best summed up in John chapter 3 verse 16 if one has the proper contextual understanding of the word believe believe in context and in ancient Judaism meant more than an intellectual assent to believe also meant to obey, which is seen, in context, in JN 336, 1 JN 2-3 FF, and 1 JN 5-1 FF. Without our positive response to grace offered, salvation is not possible. As expounded in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church's teaching is that it is the grace of God, the free and undeserved help that God gives us to respond to His call. That justifies us, a grace that is a prerequisite for our free response of collaboration in justification through faith, and in sanctification through charity. Justification According to the Catechism of the Catholic Church justification is conferred in baptism, the sacrament of faith. The sacrament of reconciliation enables recovery of justification, if lost through committing a mortal sin. A mortal sin makes justification lost, even if faith is still present. The Council of Trent sought to clarify the Catholic Church's teaching on justification and the manner in which it differed from that proposed by Lutheran and Reformed Christians. It stated, Faith is the beginning of human salvation, the foundation and root of all justification, without which it is impossible to please God ESV and to come to the fellowship of His sons, and we are therefore said to be justified gratuitously, because none of those things that precede justification, whether faith or works, merit the grace of justification. Faith, unless hope and charity be added to it, neither unites man perfectly with Christ nor makes him a living member of his body. For which reason it is most truly said that faith without works is dead James chapter 2 verses 17 to 20 and of no profit, and in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith that worketh by charity Galatians chapter 5 verse 6. Quote, After being justified. To those who work well unto the end and trust in God, eternal life is to be offered, both as a grace mercifully promised to the sons of God through Christ Jesus, and as a reward promised by God himself, to be faithfully given to their good works and merits. Since Christ Jesus himself, as the head into the members and the vine into the branches John chapter 15 verses 1 to 6, continually infuses strength into those justified, which strength always precedes, accompanies and follows their good works, and without which they could not in any manner be pleasing and meritorious before God, we must believe that nothing further is wanting to those justified to prevent them from being considered to have, by those very works which have been done in God, fully satisfied the divine law according to the state of this life and to have truly merited eternal life, to be obtained in its due time, provided they depart this life in grace, in its canons, the council condemned the following propositions. Man can be justified before God by his own works, whether done by his own natural powers or through the teaching of the law, 110, without divine grace through Jesus Christ, canon 1. 
The sinner is justified by faith alone, meaning that nothing else is required to cooperate in order to obtain the grace of justification, and that it is not in any way necessary that he be prepared and disposed by the action of his own will Canon 9. The commandments of God are, even for one that is justified and constituted in grace, impossible to observe Canon 18. The justice received is not preserved and also not increased before God through good works, but those works are merely the fruits and signs of justification obtained, but not the cause of its increase Canon 24. The good works of the one justified are in such manner the gifts of God that they are not also the good merits of him justified, or the one justified by the good works that he performs by the grace of God and the merit of Jesus Christ, whose living member he is, does not truly merit an increase of grace, eternal life, and in case he dies in grace, the attainment of eternal life itself and also an increase of glory Canon 32. Topic. Biblical exegesis. Topic. Catholic exegetes believe that St. James, to continue the thread above, had no other object than to emphasize the fact—already emphasized by St. Paul—that only such faith as is active in charity and good works fides caritate formata possesses any power to justify man cf. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 2, whilst faith devoid of charity and good works fides informis is a dead faith and in the eyes of God insufficient for justification cf. James chapter 2 verse 17 sqq. In response to sola fide, Robert Singenis argues in his 1997 book Not by Faith Alone that Lutherans and Reformed Christians have devised many and varied explanations to neutralize the clear and unambiguous statement in J.M. 2.24 that man is justified by works and not by faith alone. Each of these explanations concludes that James is not teaching that man is justified by works in the same sense that Paul says man is justified by faith. Puzzled by James's language, Martin Luther even concluded that the epistle of James was a spurious book and should not be canonically authoritative for New Testament teaching. Countering the Lutheran and Reformed Christian explanation of the Epistle of James which states that James means that men witness Abraham's works, the Genesis text Genesis chapter 22 does not include any men as witness to Abraham's works, but only God himself. Countering the Lutheran and Reformed Christian explanation of James which holds that the word justified as James uses the term refers to a vindication, rather than to a salvific justification, as Paul uses the term, are the following arguments. If James were teaching a concept of vindication, he would have said, with the proper Greek word, you see, a person is vindicated by works, moreover, since James adds the clause, and not by faith alone, we know that he is correcting a false notion concerning the solitude of faith in justification, not suggesting that Abraham was vindicated by works. If James were attempting to teach a vindication of Abraham, the specific argumentation he used would make sense only if James opponents had claimed that Abraham was vindicated by faith alone. In other words, if the vindication hypothesis were true, syntactical requirements would have forced James to use the meaning of vindicated in the first part of his argument JM in order also to use it in the latter part JM since the grammatical structure of the verse would then require that the phrase not by faith alone have its referent in the phrase is vindicated, this would force the meaning of the verse to be, a person is vindicated not by faith alone, a meaning that has no relevance to James's S discussion. The New Testament does not use the word justified in the sense of vindicated. In contexts which are soteriological, i.e., contexts which discuss salvation or damnation. Moreover, such passages as Mount 1119 where one could plausibly interpret the Greek word dikaio as referring to a vindication do so only in a metaphorical sense, therefore they do not use dikaio in the same way that James, and even Paul, use the term, which is historical and literal. James discussion of the events surrounding the justification of Rahab preclude assigning the meaning of vindicated to the word justified. Rahab's justification, as described in JM 2.25, is a salvific justification, not a vindication, yet James specifies that Rahab was justified in the same way that Abraham was justified. Therefore, one cannot understand Abraham's justification as a vindication. 
Since James and Paul use the same Greek noun dikaiosne righteous in reference to Abraham, and interpret the word in the same way cf. Gn 15-6, Erm 4-3, Jm 2-23, it would be totally incongruous for one of them to use a different meaning of its verbal cognate dikaioo in reference to Abraham. The Lutherans and Reformed Christian position assumes that Abraham's justification is a once-for-all event. James's S all important question can faith save him JM 2:14 however includes Abraham within its purview hence we must conclude that if Abraham S works were not of the quality that James prescribes in the context JM 2:15 then Abraham would not be justified Abraham could not be justified in a once for all event in GN 15 to 6 and at the same time have that justification put in jeopardy by disobedience to James's S requirement of works for justification. If this could happen, the question in JM 2.14 would have no meaning. Abraham's acts in Genesis chapter 12, 15, and 22 were acts of faith and works. We should not misconstrue Paul's stress on Abraham. S faith in his view of GN 15 to 6 to say that Abraham performed no works of loving obedience to God at this time or prior nor should we misconstrue James's S view of works in Genesis chapter 22 to say that Abraham S attempted sacrifice of Isaac was not a supreme act of faith Similarly Abraham S departure from his homeland in Genesis chapter 12 also couples his faith and works in regard to justification Throughout his life, in the periods recorded in Genesis chapters 13 to 14, 16 to 21, and 23 to 25, which are between the times of his recorded faith and obedience in the New Testament, Abraham continued to live in faith and obedience, with only what we may call minor lapses along the way. Genesis chapter 22's importance is its detailing of Abraham's quintessential act of the faith and works, which allowed God to swear an oath of blessing to him and for all his future descendants. Abraham's act in Genesis chapter 22, not GN 15-6, was the most important act in Abraham's life. The act in Genesis chapter 22 was just as much a crediting of righteousness to Abraham as that in GN 15-6. The entire context of the book of James concerns what one must do to be saved. He concentrates on obedience to the law as the means of salvation, and judgment for those who disobey that law. James includes sins of commission as well as omission in his warning against disobedience to the law. The supreme law, or royal law, that James has in view is the law of love. James assumes that the audience to whom he writes already has faith in God. The main question that James poses to them is whether they have added works to their faith. James does not suggest that works will immediately or inevitably flow from one who has faith, even though he may have a greater disposition towards good works once he has faith. James teaches that one who has faith must make a daily, conscious decision to do good works, just as he must decide each day to refrain from sin. In fact, if he chooses not to do good works when the opportunity arises, he has sinned JM 4 James does not support the Lutherans and Reformed Christian concept that one can be saved as long as he has saving faith. James is not so much attempting to qualify the faith needed for justification as he is saying that one must consciously add works to faith in order to be justified. A person, to be justified, must persevere to his last breath in this conscious decision to add works to faith. One of the most heinous in the catalog of sins that James specifies is sin of the tongue. What is said to God and man is of the utmost importance to James and a major criterion on how the individual will be judged. Both Paul and James speak of the works of love that one must add to his faith in order to be justified. Like Paul, James concludes that if one chooses the system of law and desires God to evaluate him on that basis without the benefit of grace, he must then obey the whole law without fault. For one fault, the law will utterly condemn him. Topic. Methodist view Topic. Methodism affirms the doctrine of justification by faith, but in Wesleyan Arminian theology, justification refers to pardon, the forgiveness of sins, rather than being made actually just and righteous, which Methodists believe is accomplished through sanctification. 
John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist churches, taught that the keeping of the moral law contained in the Ten Commandments, as well as engaging in the works of piety and the works of mercy, were "...indispensable for our sanctification. It is incumbent on all that are justified to be zealous of good works," says Wesley. And these are so necessary that if a man willingly neglects them, he cannot reasonably expect that he shall ever be sanctified. Methodist pastor Amy Wagner has written, Wesley understood faith as a necessity for salvation, even calling it the sole condition of salvation, in the sense that it led to justification, the beginning point of salvation. At the same time, as glorious and honorable as faith is, it is not the end of the commandment. God hath given this honor to love alone. Faith is an unspeakable blessing, because it leads to that end, the establishing anew the law of love in our hearts. This end, the law of love ruling in our hearts, is the fullest expression of salvation, it is Christian perfection. Methodist soteriology emphasizes the importance of the pursuit of holiness in salvation. Thus, for Wesley, true faith cannot subsist without works. Bishop Scott J. Jones in United Methodist Doctrine 2002 writes that in Methodist theology, Faith is necessary to salvation unconditionally. Good works are necessary only conditionally, that is if there is time and opportunity. The thief on the cross in Luke chapter 23 verses 39 to 43 is Wesley's example of this. He believed in Christ and was told, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This would be impossible if the good works that are the fruit of genuine repentance and faith were unconditionally necessary for salvation. The man was dying and lacked time, his movements were confined and he lacked opportunity. In his case, faith alone was necessary. However, for the vast majority of human beings good works are necessary for continuance in faith because those persons have both the time and opportunity for them. Bishop Jones concludes that United Methodist doctrine thus understands true, saving faith to be the kind that, give time and opportunity, will result in good works. Any supposed faith that does not in fact lead to such behaviors is not genuine, saving faith." Methodist evangelist Phoebe Palmer stated that, "...justification would have ended with me had I refused to be holy." While Faith is essential for a meaningful relationship with God. Our relationship with God also takes shape through our care for people, the community, and creation itself. Methodism, inclusive of the holiness movement, thus teaches that justification is made conditional on obedience and progress in sanctification, emphasizing a deep reliance upon Christ not only in coming to faith, but in remaining in the faith. Richard P. Bucher contrasts this position with the Lutheran one, discussing an analogy put forth by the founder of the Methodist Church, John Wesley. Whereas in Lutheran theology the central doctrine and focus of all our worship and life is justification by grace through faith, for Methodists the central focus has always been holy living and the striving for perfection. Wesley gave the analogy of a house. He said repentance is the porch. Faith is the door. But holy living is the house itself. Holy living is true religion. Salvation is like a house. To get into the house you first have to get on the porch repentance and then you have to go through the door faith. But the house itself, one's relationship with God, is holiness, holy living. Topic. Excerpts from confessions and creeds which support sola fide. Topic. Topic. Anglicanism Topic. The Anglican position is set out in the 39 Articles, specifically Article 11, of the justification of man. We are accounted righteous before God, only for the merit of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ by faith, and not for our own works or deservings. Wherefore that we are justified by faith only as a most wholesome doctrine, and very full of comfort, as more largely is expressed in the homily of justification. However, certain Anglican and Episcopal theologians especially Anglo-Catholics argue for a faith characterized by faithfulness, where good works and the sacraments play an important role in the life of the Christian believer. See New Perspective on Paul. Topic. Lutheran. 
Topic. Our churches by common consent teach that men cannot be justified before God by their own strength, merits, or works, but are freely justified for Christ's sake, through faith, when they believe that they are received into favor, and that their sins are forgiven for Christ's sake, who, by his death, has made satisfaction for our sins. This faith God imputes for righteousness in his sight. Rom. 3 and 4. Topic. Southern Baptist Topic. Justification is God's gracious and full acquittal upon principles of his righteousness of all sinners who repent and believe in Christ. Justification brings the believer unto a relationship of peace and favor with God. Topic. Reformed Baptist Topic. 28 that those which have union with Christ, are justified from all their sins, past, present, and to come, by the blood of Christ, which justification we conceive to be a gracious and free acquittance of a guilty, sinful creature, from all sin by God, through the satisfaction that Christ hath made by his death, and this applied in the manifestation of it through faith. Chapter 11 of the London Baptist Confession of Faith 1689 is the same as the Westminster Confession of Faith. Topic. Mennonites Topic. The position of the Mennonite Church USA is set out in the pamphlet Confession of Faith in a Mennonite Perspective 1995. It is a typical Anabaptist confession of faith. The commentary to Article 8 of the Confession states, This confession uses a variety of expressions for salvation. For example, salvation is often expressed as justification by faith. The justification that is reckoned to us as salvation Rom, 4 -1 is experienced as a covenant relationship with God. A covenant is a binding agreement between two parties. God offers the relationship. The just, or righteous, person has received the offer, lives according to the covenant, and trusts in God's faithfulness. Justification by faith and faithful obedience to the covenant relationship are inseparable Heb. 11. Topic. Reformed Continental Topic. We believe that our blessedness lies in the forgiveness of our sins because of Jesus Christ, and that in it our righteousness before God is contained, as David and Paul teach us when they declare that man blessed to whom God grants righteousness apart from works. And the same apostle says that we are justified, freely, or by grace, through redemption in Jesus Christ. And therefore we cling to this foundation, which is firm forever, giving all glory to God, humbling ourselves, and recognizing ourselves as we are, not claiming a thing for ourselves or our merits and leaning and resting on the sole obedience of Christ crucified, which is ours when we believe in him. That is enough to cover all our sins and to make us confident, freeing the conscience from the fear, dread, and terror of God's approach, without doing what our first father, Adam, did, who trembled as he tried to cover himself with fig leaves. In fact, if we had to appear before God relying, no matter how little, on ourselves or some other creature, then, alas, we would be swallowed up. Therefore everyone must say with David, Lord, do not enter into judgment with your servants, for before you no living person shall be justified. Question 86, since then we are delivered from our misery, merely of grace, through Christ, without any merit of ours, why must we still do good works? Answer, because Christ, having redeemed and delivered us by his blood, also renews us by his Holy Spirit, after his own image, that so we may testify, by the whole of our conduct, our gratitude to God for his blessings, and that he may be praised by us, also, that every one may be assured in himself of his faith, by the fruits thereof, and that, by our godly conversation others may be gained to Christ. Question 87, cannot they then be saved, who, continuing in their wicked and ungrateful lives, are not converted to God? Answer, by no means, for the Holy Scripture declares that no unchaste person, idolater, adulterer, thief, covetous man, drunkard, slanderer, robber, or any such like, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Topic. Reformed Presbyterian Topic. 
I, those whom God effectually calls, he also freely justifies, not by infusing righteousness into them, but by pardoning their sins, and by accounting and accepting their persons as righteous, not for anything wrought in them, or done by them, but for Christ's sake alone, nor by imputing faith itself, the act of believing, or any other evangelical obedience to them, as their righteousness, but by imputing the obedience and satisfaction of Christ unto them, they receiving and resting on him and his righteousness by faith, which faith they have not of themselves, it is the gift of God. Topic. Methodism Topic. The following statements from Confessions of Faiths of the Wesleyan Arminian tradition reflect Methodist theology on salvation. We are accounted righteous before God only for the merit of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith, and not for our own works or deservings. Wherefore, that we are justified by faith, only, is a most wholesome doctrine, and very full of comfort. We believe good works are the necessary fruits of faith and follow regeneration but they do not have the virtue to remove our sins or to avert divine judgment. We believe good works, pleasing and acceptable to God in Christ, spring from a true and living faith, for through and by them faith is made evident. Nondenominational evangelicals the justification of the sinner solely by the grace of God through faith in Christ crucified and risen from the dead. We believe in the salvation of lost and sinful man through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ by faith apart from works, and regeneration by the Holy Spirit. Topic. Additional ecumenical statements Topic. Topic. Evangelicals Topic. The New Testament makes it clear that the gift of salvation is received through faith. By grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. By faith, which is also the gift of God, we repent of our sins and freely adhere to the gospel, the good news of God's saving work for us in Christ. By our response of faith to Christ, we enter into the blessings promised by the Gospel. Faith is not merely intellectual assent but an act of the whole persons involving the mind, the will, and the affections, issuing in a changed life. We understand that what we hear affirm is in agreement with what the Reformation traditions have meant by justification by faith alone sola fide. Topic. Lutheran World Federation and the Roman Catholic Church Topic 4.3 Justification by faith and through grace 25. We confess together that sinners are justified by faith in the saving action of God in Christ. By the action of the Holy Spirit in baptism, they are granted the gift of salvation, which lays the basis for the whole Christian life. They place their trust in God's gracious promise by justifying faith, which includes hope in God and love for Him. Such a faith is active in love and thus the Christian cannot and should not remain without works. But whatever in the justified proceeds or follows the free gift of faith is neither the basis of justification nor merits it. In the preamble, too, it is suggested that much of the debate on sola fide has been based on condemnations of caricatured positions not actually held. The teaching of the Lutheran churches presented in the Declaration does not fall under the condemnations from the Council of Trent. The condemnations in the Lutheran confessions do not apply to the teaching of the Roman Catholic Church presented in this declaration. Topic: <laughs> Lutheran Orthodox Joint Commission. Topic 5: Regarding the way in which salvation is appropriated by the believers, Lutherans, by teaching that justification and salvation are by grace alone through faith sola gratia, sola fide, stress the absolute priority of divine grace in salvation. When they speak about saving faith they do not think of the dead faith which even the demons have cf. James chapter 2 verse 19, but the faith which Abraham showed and which was reckoned to him as righteousness cf. Gen. 15-6, Rom. 4-3, 9. The Orthodox also affirm the absolute priority of divine grace. They underline that it is God's grace which enables our human will to conform to the divine will cf. 
Phil 2:13 In the steps of Jesus praying not as I will but as you will Matthew chapter 26 verse 39 so that we may work out our salvation in fear and trembling cf Phil 2:12 This is what the orthodox mean by synergy working together of divine grace and the human will of the believer in the appropriation of the divine life in Christ the understanding of synergy in salvation is helped by the fact that the human will in the one person of Christ was not abolished when the human nature was united in him with the divine nature, according to the Christological decisions of the ecumenical councils. While Lutherans do not use the concept of synergy, they recognize the personal responsibility of the human being in the acceptance or refusal of divine grace through faith, and in the growth of faith and obedience to God. Lutherans and Orthodox both understand good works as the fruits and manifestations of the believer's faith and not as a means of salvation. Topic see also topic Antinomianism Belief in Jesus Double imputation Expounding of the law Fate of the unlearned Justification from eternity topic References topic topic External links topic By faith alone and James A confessional Lutheran perspective Importance of sola fide A confessional Lutheran perspective Good works A confessional Lutheran perspective Essays on sola fide Page 1 and page 2 Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary Bible Verses on sola fide A Catholic perspective Is there a contradiction between faith and works, article stating that faith without works is impossible.